Alright, so this is going to be a lot different than the way most guys do it, but he did it this way because with the traditional way, you got to use the duck square, there's a whole lot of extra math and shit you got to know, like that's where all those increments came from, where it's like add three quarter, take away three quarter and shit, alright? This is a lot simpler, and then once you figure out how to do this, this way, there's not a lot of math involved, super simple. So, I want an 18 inch diameter out there, right? So I want the edge of my ductwork. 18 inch square. 18 by 18 square. Yeah. So the inner diameter is going to be like 15 something. But we got to take into consideration the inch thickness of the, the ductwork, right? So the way he likes to do it is he works uh, right to left. So right to left. I'm left-handed, so I constantly want to work left to right. But he does it this way, right to left. So he always starts with the blue tool. And I, I'll show you where we've been messing up. So we always start with the blue tool. Run this on the edge, right? And once you, I'm saying this because once you see what I do, you're going to realize where we've been doing it wrong. So we're always doing it from this edge, right? Down the side. So the one thing we've been doing wrong is we've just been measuring everything out and we cut it. We need to actually cut it as we go. But we also need to cut from the right side of the tool, so the line we follow. So the first cut's going to be, so we're going to go, it's 18 inches what I want. So I have to actually subtract, subtract three from my measurement in order to get the outer diameter I want. So what I'm technically measuring here is the inner diameter. So I'm measuring 15, 15, 15, All right. and then adding three quarters at the end so it folds in together, so 15 and three quarters. But I'll show you where we've been messing up. So he did, like I said, he did it this way because he thought it was easier, a lot less manageable. We measure off this innermost cut here, our 15. We're going to describe our lines. Now the mistake we've been making is that we actually need to make these beam cuts every single time first. Okay? And the other mistake we've been making is we've been using this tool going right down the middle on this scribe line, ball scribe line, ball on our scribe line. We actually need to be doing it the same way we did the blue cut and following our scribe line from the inside, the right inside of our feet. So if we follow this method, so like this, right? I'm going to follow this. Instead of going in the middle, like you can, uh, we need to be going on the outside. That's the mistake we've been making, right? So like I'm lining this corner up right here with my scribe. But the other important thing is that we have to make the cut every time before we continue on with our measurement. And then when we make our next measurement, we're not making it from the center or the outside. We're taking it from here, okay. the outermost edge. All right. So again, 15. Yeah, outermost edge, 15. Alright, so what we're doing is we're trying to make an outer diameter box 18 inches. Okay, so I want it square 18 by 18. In order to do that, we have to subtract 3 from our actual measurement because the ductwork is, is the ductwork itself is inch and a half thick. So when it folds in, it's got like a total of 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3, right? So we're taking away 3 inches. If it were an inch ductwork or an inch ductwork, then we would only take away uh, that, 
again, this is not like the super traditional way that a lot of guys do. We see a lot of guys learn using those tools and things like that. But I'm showing this way. This is the way the guy that taught me did it because there's a lot less math to it. Like if you use the T-square and all the right tools and all that stuff, there's so much math you have to try and remember in your head for each cut. Like each one has to have a method. Whereas this way, it's pretty straightforward. But the key to it was that we should be on our scribe, scribe line on the right hand side of our blade, not just inside of the center like a straight that you follow it. Well, the way we're doing our math, we're falling on the right side. Some guys do T square and they make the measurements, they're just making their scribes first and then they're going with all the speed one time. But doing it this way, have to cut out so much math and all this extra shit. Speed wise, it's probably exact. This is just a little less mental, mentally taxing. The last cut's going to be 15 and three quarters. We're adding on that extra, you know, half of what 1.5 is, right? You got to add that on so that way when we fold everything in, it fits perfectly into that first cut. That's where that three quarter inch minute comes from. 15 and three quarters on this one. Yeah, that's I mean, it is recorded, but I, I don't know about the angle. You know what I mean? Like, the code and the angle. But yeah, it is working. Alright, this last cut should be a straight cut. Straight edge. No more tools. Okay, so I realized that was probably hard to hear. We're going to walk through this one more time. Our student German is going to help us out with this. So he's going to make his initial cut with his blue tool. This is going to be our right to left start here. He's going to create that blue tool cut, which is essentially our fold cut. Now, he's making a 2020 box. So to keep into consideration our inch and a half insulation, he is going to be subtracting three from his total measurement. So he wants an outside diameter of 20. We're going to start with a cut measurement of 17 minus three right real simple um, so he's going to make sure that he makes that scribe on 17 we're then going to take our red tool and instead of following the scribe line on the tool itself which is dead center of the v we're going to make that scribe cut on the right hand side of our v cut so if you look at the tool the right hand side is what we're wanting to make that actual cut with uh, you'll notice a little bit better on this one how he does that. So that final cut is going to be a 17 and 3 quarters inch uh, cut. So we're going to add 3 quarter inch to, again, compensate for our insulation and our fold for when it's made. So his first cut was 17, second cut, 17, third cut, 17, and the final cut, 17 and 3 quarters. So 
So now he's just going to put the box together. He's going to tape it up real good, make sure it's nice and square. Uh, on this one, we're going to be utilizing it on a commercial package unit we have that is a heat pump. Uh, we have found that in the heat pump mode, we're sucking in too much of the hot air it is creating, raising our head pressures, and it will eventually trip out on high pressure if we don't do something about that. So we decided to take these plenums and 90 them out so we could 90 the return air and 90 the supply air away from each other. And uh, we noticed that we got a lot better operation out of that system once we did that. Coming up here, once we make this 90, uh, which we're just taking a 45 degree angle cut on two sides of the plenum box and then a straight edge cut on the top and the bottom of it and then just flipping um, those two cuts against each other to create the 90. So not too difficult, fairly easy process. Uh, you do have to, on your tapered end, make a 45 degree cut with say your duck knife or some form of knife. Uh, so that way you have a nice clean edge when they meet, nice and flush surfaces. Um, outside of that, relatively simple process. Uh, this plenum came out awesome. German did a fantastic job, uh, and he had just watched this lesson this one time. So uh, for him to come out with this, it's a, it's a very easy method. I highly recommend it. All you need is a T-square, a level, uh, something to that effect, and uh, you can get this done. And, and the math purpose of this is much easier. It's a much simpler way to do this. Uh, you don't have to worry about your duck square and all these different calculations and things like that. Once you get the ball rolling on this, um, it's fairly simple. So German's going to go ahead and tape up his plenum box here, uh, finish off putting it together, getting us ready to attach it to the system. Um, they spent about five minutes attaching to the system, two of them total, taping it up really good, making sure we didn't have any obviously big gaps or air leaks or possible air leaks. Uh, and then we went on to a little discussion on how to stand out. And one way I like to stand out is in the method I use to apply mastic to the to the plenum. So the plenums themselves um, are going to be sealed, but the seams where we have these tape, even though you've squeezed down the tape nice and tight, there are perforated lines across this fiberglass duckboard. And the perforated lines offer a small amount of air to come in and out of those plenums, depending on if they're a return or a supply. Um, so that's why duct sealing uh, at the very end with mastic is important. We want to make sure that we have absolutely airtight plenums on this system with no issues that could cause any infiltration into the unit. Um, so this being uh, one of the ways I like to stand out, uh, it takes minimal effort and you get maximum results. Now, like most painters do, and they tape things off because they want to get nice straight edges, that's exactly what I'm going to do here for my mastic. Uh, before I apply it to the unit, or sorry, to the plenum, I'm going to go ahead and tape off the areas I do not want any mastic to touch. Uh, therefore, once I smear this stuff on here to seal, I peel off this tape and I get nice straight lines on my plenums with my mastic and it comes out looking super clean, super professional. Uh, it's something that in the past my clients, customers had always really appreciated. It was something that stood out to them. It was something that stood out for my managers. Um, it was probably one of the ways that I ended up getting management positions because I did these little extra things that did not take much effort but had maximum results at the end. I mean, it was a high quality looking installation uh, when it came down to it. And this is again, something super simple anybody can do. Um, so I wanted to demonstrate it to my students so I could set them up for success in their future careers in the industry. So in most cases we have black tape on our trucks, which is what we used here. Um, it's what I used to use always in the field, but masking tape would probably be easier as far as removing it from the plenum itself. You don't want to put the tape on too hard, remove it too quickly, and end up removing some of that outer silver film from your fiberglass duckboard plenum. Um, but as you can see here, it was easy enough to remove if you don't squeegee the, the tape on there, so to speak. Um, but we got super clean, nice straight lines on our tape joints. And I do this all the way around on all my tape joints. Um, and like I said, it's just a great way to stand out minimal effort, maximum result, you're going to look like an absolute pro. And that's what I want for my guys. So um, thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please leave uh, anything in the comment section. I'd be happy to get to it. And if you have any recommendations for future videos, that would be excellent as well. Thanks.